how do you know whether you've chosen the right target market for your no-code app in business? The reality is you can have an awesome app idea, but if you are trying to sell it to the wrong market, it doesn't really matter how good the idea or the product is, you're still going to struggle to launch and grow your business. So how do you know, how can you make sure you are moving forward with the highest chances of success possible with the target market you've chosen? Now, make sure you stick around until the end, because once you've chosen the right target market, you need to build the right product. And we have a deep dive training that'll walk you through the next steps with that. And we'll come back to that at the end. Now, first, if you're new around here, my my name is Kristen, and I'm the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps, where we help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they, they can either launch their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding and no tech background required. All right, so we're over on the whiteboard here, and there are four different factors you need to look at when choosing the right target market for your no-code app, or at least confirming that you've chosen the right market. So in the upper left here, on the screen, the first thing you need to look at is whether or not the target market you've chosen is in dire need of a solution. And this sounds simple, but it's often overlooked. Is your target market in pain? Now, this can be a tough one for some people because not every app is built to solve a problem where people are clearly just in large amounts of pain or frustration with some sort of process. And I get that. But no matter what problem you're solving, you have to make sure there are frustrations around the current solutions or lack of current solutions. You have to make sure there is some sort of urgency and need for a solution, because if there are no pain points, then what really is the problem that your app is solving? And so you have to identify those and you have to make sure your target market is in some sort of pain and the more dire the need for the solution. So the, the higher the pain or the bigger the pain points, the better, because that means that they really do need the solution that you are offering. So you want to look at whether or not they are really in dire need. And again, the more, the better, which sounds a little bit weird in this context, but you see what I mean. The more, the better for you being able to provide a solution that fixes that pain. Now, the thing is, if you don't have a target market that is in a, a good deal of pain or they're not experiencing pain points as it relates to your app, then what you're going to find is less urgency, right? Less urgency to actually find, look for, even think to look for a solution and lower value. Okay. So the, the lower the pain your target market is in, the fewer the pain points, the less the frustration they're feeling, the less urgency they're going to feel when it comes to even thinking to look for a solution, right? And that's going to lower the value of your app because if it doesn't solve a big problem that's causing a lot of pain, then it's not going to be all that valuable. Okay, so you want to make sure that you've chosen a target market that does have some really specific pain points. Now, the second factor you want to look at when choosing or confirming your target market is can they pay? Okay, so you can have a, a fantastic app, but if your users don't have the ability to pay for that app, then it doesn't really matter. So you just want to look at whether or not your target market can afford the solution that you're creating. So, it, you know, this seems probably really simple and kind of a given, but it can often be overlooked because there are a, a lot of good solutions out there for target markets that do have pain points, but the, the ability to pay just isn't there. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't serve that target market. It just means that in order to grow a business, obviously you need to make money so that you can, can actually provide the solution and grow the business. So you would just need to make sure that the way you are structuring the app, the pricing model, for example, 
makes it so that someone or something is paying for your app because otherwise you're not going to have a business, which means you can't serve that target market anyways. So if you don't have a payment model, a pricing structure, a, a target market that can afford your solution, then in reality, even the good ideas can fail. Okay. So you have to think through that. Can your target market pay? So are they, are they experiencing pain points? Can they pay in order to solve those pain points? And then the next thing is, are they easy for you to connect with, All right? This is one I see being overlooked a lot. You may have found a target market that has pain points. They can afford the solution. You're solving a problem. But if you don't have access to that market, then you're going to have a, a harder time stepping into it and growing within it. Now, that's not to say you can't, but the easier it is for you to connect with your target market, um, to, to find them, to have access to them, the easier it is, then the, the easier it's going to be for you to launch and grow your app. It's, you know, this is one of the fundamental things we talk about with our own entrepreneurs is you, when you're bringing your first users on board, the easiest thing you can do for a really quick and early launch is to go after the lowest hanging fruit when it comes to user outreach. And if you're building an app for a target market where you have access to that target market, then there's going to be a lot of low hanging fruit for you to go after people who you know, people who you're connected with, entire businesses uh, within your industry, right? And so the easier it is for you to connect with them, the easier it's going to be for you to launch and grow. And if you don't have that easy connection point, then what you're going to find is that your user outreach is going to become the bottleneck for you. And that can be really frustrating. And this is, this is the thing that I see happening so frequently. It doesn't matter how much pain the market is in, whether, uh, whether they can afford, if you have no access, even if you build that great product, launching it can be really hard. And what I see happen with a lot of people is they, they put so much time and effort into building their app. And when they launch and they don't have anyone to launch to, it's kind of like, it, it can feel a little bit defeating, to be honest. And so you want to avoid that. You, you really, you know, when you launch, that's not the time to be taking your foot off the gas pedal. That's the time to be pushing down harder. And this will help with that. Okay, now the, the last one that I want to talk about is the market growth. Okay, is the market right now growing? Again, this can seem really simple but it's not. If you are launching an app within a market that is either stagnant or is slowly declining, then you are by default going to have a hard time growing. Even if you are putting in extra effort, uh, extra hours, extra money, if the market is on a downward trend, then your pool of prospective users is going to be shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And if there are still other solutions out there, then the pool of those is going to relatively become larger and larger. And you don't want that. So you really want to choose a market that's continuing to grow because in reality, if you build and launch your app and if you just maintain what you have, but the market continues to grow, then theoretically your business can continue to grow without you really changing much. Now that's in a perfect hypothetical world, but you can see what I mean, where the, the market growth can really affect your app and your business as a whole. And so you want to, you want to try to scale as naturally as you can with your business. And so if your market that you're choosing is not growing, or even if it's on a, a decline, then you can't scale naturally. Okay. Now that's not to say that scaling is just going to happen if the market is growing. Obviously that's not how it works, but hopefully you can see what I mean here, where you're just kind of working against yourself uh, if you don't have that in play. So when you're choosing your target market, 
or if you've chosen your target market and you, you want to confirm things, which obviously you should, these are the four factors that are going to help you do that. Okay, so is your target market in pain? Are they experiencing pain points? The higher or the more pain, the more frustrations, the more urgency there's going to be in needing the solution you offer, the higher the value. Okay, without that, you're not going to have that urgency or that value. And that means that your sales are going to struggle. You're going to have a hard time charging at a higher price point, which is going to keep you from being able to create a more scalable business model. Okay, so make sure that you can identify those pain points. All right, uh, can your target market pay? It sounds obvious, it sounds simple, but it's easy to overlook this because you can have markets that are in a ton of need for a solution, but if you don't structure your payment, your pricing model correctly, because if that target market can't pay, because that target market can't pay, then you're not going to be able to grow a business. So you have to make sure you are looking at this. Even good ideas will fail if, if they can't be paid for, right? Now, third, is it easy to connect with your market? When you are having your initial launch, are you going to have to pump lots of funding into a marketing campaign or can you go after some low hanging fruit, have a, an early, quick, straightforward launch and, and get your app out there so you can start growing, right? Make sure that you have that, okay? Because otherwise, user outreach is going to become a big bottleneck for you very early and very quickly. And we don't want that. Remember when we launch, we don't want to be taking our foot off the gas. We want to be pushing down on that gas pedal even harder. And lastly, is your market growing? If it's not, or if it's declining, then you're not going to be able to scale naturally. And again, that doesn't mean scale easily. Obviously there's more to it, but you're not going to be able to grow with your market. And, and, having that growing market is only going to help you over the long run. All right, I hope that's helpful for you. And when you're moving forward with your app, make sure you keep these four factors in mind. It's going to help you move forward with more clarity and confidence and certainty as you build and launch your app. And if you're moving into that stage where you have your app idea, you have your target market identified, you want to build the right product and launch in the right ways at the right time, then we have a deep dive training that'll guide you through those steps by the hand. It's over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. It's going to help you make sure you are defining the right product for the target market, the right first product. So you can launch early, build quick traction and grow and build on top of that. So you can join in on that at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. All right. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.